When you think of photography equipment, the first brands that might pop up to your mind are Canon, Nikon, Sony or Panasonic. All four of them are Japanese giants of the digital camera market, with almost 90% of the camera sales around the world. But it wasn't always the case. Not too long ago, one of the most iconic American brands of the 20th century was the leader of the market and employed more than 120,000 people worldwide. This is the story of Kodak and how it went from a $30 billion company to fighting for bankruptcy. Kodak, or the Eastman Kodak Company, is an American public company founded by George Eastman and Henry Strong in 1888. Since in the end of the dry plate technology in the photography business, George Eastman invented the first usable photographic film, patented in 1884, and went to develop the Kodak camera, the first camera designed to use film roll which signed the birth of the snapshot photography. Kodak not only invented a relatively easy process that anyone could use to take pictures, but it also became the reference when talking about photography. The very first slogan says it all. You press the button, we do the rest. Kodak found the perfect equation to make an expensive hobby for the first time affordable to the masses, but also found a way to make money, a lot of it. Nowadays, with our smartphones and apps, it is easy to forget how taking pictures was a lengthy process. You had to buy the camera to take the photo, wait until you've used all of the film and take it to a processing lab, leave your film there, come back a few days later and pay to get the photos. That's why the movie and photography industries were all about films, paper, printers and chemicals. You see? In 2020, the business model of almost all the film technology companies hovers around hardware, software and accessories. But less than 30 years ago, it was still all about the consumables and less about making profit selling cameras. And that's what killed Kodak. The first version of the Kodak camera was preloaded with a film roll that could take 100 photos. And once used, you could simply take the whole camera to Kodak to be processed. The price, however, was still a bit steep for a lot of people. The Kodak camera was sold for $25, the equivalent of $680 today. The real revolution came 12 years later with the first Kodak Brownie, which kept a similar design but had two major upgrades. It only cost $1 to purchase the camera and another dollar to get a film roll that could be taken out and get it processed. This incredible offer resulted in the birth of printing services all over the place, from chemists to photographic retailers. Kodak had such an impact in our recent history that some of the rare photographs we have today from the Titanic tragedy or the moon landing were taken using a Kodak camera. Even the more recent Kodak tagline, Kodak moment, entered the common lexicon to describe a moment worth being recorded for prosperity, comparable to how the word Google became a verb to our generation. The razor and blades business model, selling inexpensive cameras, sometimes at a loss and making large margins from consumables, films, chemicals and paper, a strategy that Kodak adopted very early on, which the company to command 90% of film sales and 85% of camera sales in the US in as late as 1976. And even though Kodak was at its peak, it never stopped investing heavily into research and development. It was what made the company keep the absolute advantage over the almost inexistent competition at the time, which enabled the company to stay ahead of the curve and avoid huge impacts to its bottom line. The invention of the Kodak camera in 1888 anticipated a shift in the market from the old plates technology to a newer, much easier one that would have soon happened anyway. Another invention that had the same results was the introduction of the color film, even if it wasn't as sharp as the black and white monochromatic film. 
The intense investment in R&D led the company to one of the most iconic inventions in 1975, the digital camera. It wasn't impressive by any means. It was the size of a toaster and could only take black and white pictures in 0.01 megapixel resolution. But it was iconic because of how disruptive it was to the filming and photography industries. It didn't only change the technical process behind taking a picture or filming a movie, it also signed a death sentence on a large portion of the production ecosystem. With a digital camera you don't need film rolls, and half of the chemicals used to treat it. And Kodak knew that, but it chose to believe otherwise. Instead of doing what George Eastman, the founder of the company, did twice before by anticipating a massive shift in the industry, Kodak didn't want to change its business model. After all, it was making billions of dollars in sales, even exceeded the $10 billion mark in 1988, the equivalent of almost $30 billion when adjusted for inflation. Around the same time, however, Sony introduced the first electronic camera to the market which spooked one of Kodak's largest retailers. As a result, Kodak conducted an extensive research into the matter to study the probability of the adoption of this new digital technology. The study produced both good and bad news. The new technology could indeed replace Kodak's film business, but it however needed a bit of time to do that. It estimated that Kodak had roughly 10 years to adapt its business model. The technology was still new and needed to reach the symbolic 1 megapixel milestone first to become a viable threat. But instead of focusing on transition in the way it made money, the company chose to use this new technology to improve the quality of film. We now know that the study was impressively accurate. In 1986, Kodak's labs developed the first 1 megapixel digital camera. In the few years that followed, the top management was all over the place and tried everything but to part with its razor and blades business model. In 1988, Kodak bought sterling drugs for $5.1 billion in an attempt to convince itself that it was more like a drug company rather than a photography company, but later understood that it really wasn't a drug company and had to sell sterling in pieces for about half of the original purchase price. In 1989, the board of directors chose K.R. Whitmer as a CEO who made sure that Kodak stayed closer to its core and chemicals business. He was replaced in 1993 by George Fisher, who was the CEO of Motorola and who oversaw the $500 million flop of the Advantix preview system in 1996, which was a digital camera that allowed users to preview their shots, but they still had to buy a film. These desperate moves continued for the next decade. The company failed to turn profits since 2007, was valued at around $140 million in 2011 from a high of $30 billion in 1997, and resorted to selling some of its assets and suing companies like Fujifilm and Apple for infringing on patents to offset its huge losses. Kodak finally filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in January 2012. Kodak's story is an example of both success and failure. It is a lesson that not only companies can learn from, but also regular people like you and I. Failing to anticipate a shift in the market can sink even the larger enterprises. The levels of arrogance and stubbornness expressed by Kodak's top management for over 20 years led the company to a bankruptcy that could have easily been avoided, since it had all the tools and information to do so. The world is in constant movement and change, and refusing to accept this reality won't make it go away. It should be embraced and used to fuel our personal evolution and progress.